All right, and welcome back, Fury Motion Picture Company. So I'm on a bit of a hiatus right now from the feature I've been working on because several of our crew unfortunately came down with the coronavirus. Now, in the meantime, as fate would have it, a set of lenses that I ordered way back in August finally showed up on my front doorstep like two days after production shut down. So I thought, hey, what a better time to fire up the old YouTube channel again and do a quick review. So here they are. Well, here's one of them at least. So this is a vintage Russian stills lens that has been rehoused by a company called Iron Glass Adapters. Inside this beautiful, newly engineered body are the optical guts of a cult classic lens called the Helios 442. Now, I personally had never heard of a Helios before my friend suggested that I check out Iron Glass, but it turns out they're like one of the most mass-produced and popular lenses of its time. I'm not going to go into the full history, but from what I understand, the original Helios, mechanically speaking, was a nightmare. The lens mount would come unscrewed whenever you pulled focus. So the paradox is, inside that garbage can of a body of the original Helios lies this beautiful combination of glass and coatings that just render stunning images. Now, besides the Helios, Iron Glass has actually rehoused a few other vintage Russian stills lenses. So now you can build a set that more or less matches in color and feel so that the Helios basically doesn't just become a one-off specialty lens. All right, so I got their four lens set, which consists of the 58 millimeter Helios, of course. I also have the 28 millimeter, which is a rehoused version of the Mir 10A. It's engraved right here on the barrel in case you forget. There is a 37 millimeter which is a rehoused version of a Mir 1V, I think. Or maybe it's 4, Mir 4. I don't know. There's a 1 and a V. I don't know if it's supposed to be Roman numeral or if it's 1V4. One, one I don't know. The Mir 37 millimeter. And I also have an 85 millimeter, which is on the camera. And that is a rehoused version of the Jupiter 9. Iron Glass does offer a 20 millimeter as well as a 135 millimeter to kind of round out a six lens set. But at the time I ordered mine, those were still in the prototype stage. So I'm not sure if or when they're going to be ready to ship. I've used rehoused lenses once or twice before from a couple other manufacturers. And I got to tell you that comparatively speaking, first of all, those were way more expensive, but these are pretty dang good. I mean, they have all the main things that you really want in a cinema lens, right? Uh, dedicated gears for focus and iris, uh, a nice long smooth focus throw with hard stops. Um, iris is nice and smooth as well. Um, the gears on all the bodies are aligned. In fact, I believe the bodies are exactly the same. So the gears match up for your follow focus motors. Um, they have a standard a 95 millimeter outside di diameter on the front so you can attach a, a, a matte box um, and move between lenses without issues. So overall, it's a really nice build and I would not hesitate to have these lenses on any set that I'm working on. Now I have to say that there are a few quirks and I think that just comes down to the price point. There just has to be some compromises. First of all, just remember that these are derived from stills photography lenses. So they're going to breathe. One thing I didn't anticipate, which was almost a deal breaker for me, if you look as you turn the focus ring, the lens extends. The barrel extends. It's not very much, but as you turn the focus ring, the barrel extends in and out. Now, that may or may not be a problem for you. I use a clamp-on matte box most of the time. So as I clamp, you know, I clamp on my matte box and um, and I pull focus the matte box just moves in and out with the lens. So it's not really a big deal. Uh, if you're using a matte box that's mounted on rods, for example, that might start to become an issue for you. So another issue you might run into with the body extending as you pull focus, you notice that the iris ring is here attached to the front of the body. So when you're pulling focus, that iris ring is going to move in and out. Now, most of the time, that's probably not going to be an issue. But if you wanted to use a lens motor to pull iris, then that starts to become a problem. Um, again, it doesn't move a ton. So if you have a wider gear on your motor, 
you know, it might be able to stay engaged, but that's definitely something that you're going to want to watch out for. Now, of course, it would have been really nice if all of that movement could have happened within the body of the lens. So the lens, even if the lens itself was a little bit longer, you know, and the elements just kind of move inside. But again, I think that comes down to a function of price. All right, so one other quirk I found also has to do with the focus ring. Now, if you've noticed, the focus ring is this one that's closer to the body. The iris ring is the one further out on the lens. And that is completely opposite from pretty much every other lens I've ever used. Again, maybe that's not a big problem. But besides being confusing, I mean, I've only had these lenses for a couple of days and I've already reached for and turned the iris when I meant to be turning the focus. Besides that issue, if you're using a lens motor, uh, having the focus ring that close to the mount, meaning it's going to be that close to the body, might cause some issues with trying to get your motor in the right place. In fact, I had to spend some time and, and reconfigure my rig and the way that I attach my lens motor. I, I even had to flip the gear on my lens motor to the other side so that I could tuck it all in and get it to fit that close to the body. Now, if you're not using a lens motor, that's not a big deal. Uh, the one thing I will say, however, is that these are fairly stiff, so it, they're not the easiest to pull focus off the barrel when you're kind of running gunning. So one other little quirk to note is that the markings for the lens are out here on this flange of the, of the body close to the end. Um, now, that becomes an, a little bit of an issue. Again, when I'm using my clamp on matte box, it covers up all of those markings. Not a big deal that, you know, it covers up the Helios 442, the vintage lens for video, uh, Cine Edition markings and all that. But there have been a couple times where I've forgotten what lens is actually on the camera and I look over to see what it is and that's covered up by the matte box. And I've actually had to take off the matte box. Oh, okay, that's the 58 that's on there. Put the matte box back on, whatever. Maybe that's just a me problem, forgetting what lens is on the camera. I don't know. But that was a little annoying the couple times, actually, that that's happened. So maybe my suggestion might be for future versions is that they engrave the numbers of the lens and the f-stop out here on this angled part of the barrel just to kind of avoid that. All right, so having said all of that, those are really nitpicky items, and these are really light and compact and overall just really well-built housings. Oh, and by the way, they cover full frame. So, of course, I'm excited to use them on the Mini LF. All right, so I've already talked way more than I wanted to on this one. If you need more details, go to their website. I put a link in the description below. It's ironglassadapters.com. So now on to the portion of the video that I know you all came here to see. Test footage. As per my other videos, there is nothing scientific about this. Simply put the lenses on the camera, set up a little scene, so you can get an idea of what they look like. I did run them through several different f-stops and focus from close to infinity, so you can get an idea of what the bokeh looks and feels like across the range. One thing I didn't cover were lens flares, and that's simply because I couldn't find a flashlight in this house that had a strong enough beam to give me the flares I wanted. Sorry. Now, I shot everything, of course, on my Alexa Mini LF, and I shot an open gate, and I left it that way so that you can see just how much of the sensor these lenses actually cover. It's the full sensor. Now, if you really want to see the flares or just how these lenses perform in the field generally, I'll be posting a video soon where I took my two kids and my dog literally to a field. I will say this, though. These lenses do flare like crazy. They're beautiful, and I love it. Just make sure that you're subscribed to this channel so you don't miss out. Okay, that's it for me. Thanks for watching, and here we go.